In the early 1960s, the Tenderloin neighborhood of San Francisco, California started to function as a red light district. This is where sex work, drugs, and gambling became a massive part of the community. And because of this, it functioned as a place where individuals living on the fringes of normal society found it easier to live. This includes members of the LGBTQ community. Oftentimes, restaurants or bars in this district didn't call out to their patrons that they were closing for the night and ask them politely to leave. Instead, they called the police because in those days, it was illegal to be gay and against the law to dress in women's clothing because they didn't accept you for being transgender yet. Though the exact date is not confirmed, in the early morning hours of an August day in 1966, many patrons were enjoying their meals and 60 cent cups of coffee at the local restaurant called Jean Compton's Cafeteria. This 24 hour eatery was centrally located in the district, right next to the hair salon, a corner bar and the local bathhouse, which was the commercial space that gay men used to have sex with other men. And this location made the restaurant a popular one in the community. But the owners didn't like so many LGBTQ people being their patrons. So they regularly called the police to raid their building rather than politely asking everyone to leave. And you might ask why LGBTQ people still went there to eat, but it was illegal to be LGBTQ across the whole country. And so it didn't really matter where they went to eat or even go grocery shopping so they can eat at home. Just being alive and trying to live as a normal person was against the rules. So the LGBTQ people had no choice but to go somewhere for coffee. But on one night in August of 1966, three years before the Stonewall riots, yet again, the police raided the Jean Compton's cafeteria. Only this time, as one of the police officers grabbed a drag queen by the arm, she threw a cup of coffee in his face. Good for her. This caused the entire cafeteria to erupt in a riot. People flipped tables, threw cutlery, sugar shakers crashed through the restaurant windows and doors, and drag queens swung heavy purses at the officers. Outside, the police were arresting dozens of people and loading them into paddy wagons as they fought back heroically. The crowd that night trashed a cop car and set fire to a newsstand. After that night was over, it went largely unreported because police raids on an LGBTQ frequented restaurant, let alone one in a red light district, were all too common. But even those in the LGBTQ didn't really talk about the Compton Cafeteria Riot, partly because they were so used to it happening too. In fact, besides memories from police, patrons, and eyewitnesses that night, the only record which survived of the event into the present day is a short article by gay activist Raymond Brochiers. Later, a woman by the name of Susan Stryker, who is a historian, found his article and decided to find many patrons, police, and eyewitnesses, asking them to tell their story to her. The Compton Cafeteria Riots were nearly as important as the Stonewall Riots, but without Susan Stryker and the article from Raymond Brochiers, it would have been erased from history. Anyway, that was our LGBTQ history fact of the day. Please join us in fighting for LGBTQ education in all schools by signing the petition linked below. While you're down there, consider supporting our show by checking out our Pride Academy student collection in our merchandise store. Don't forget to like this video, comment your LGBTQ friendly thoughts, hit that rainbow subscribe button so you don't miss out on new episodes of the show, and share this video with others. As always, I'm your host, Matt Haslam. This has been PBR. Thank you so much for watching and have a gay day, everyone. Watch Powered by Rainbows Season 3, only on MHPTV.